Hello, hello. I think all systems are a go. Hi, everybody. How are you doing? It's Tuesday. How's your week going? How's everyone doing? Looks like there's a few of you ugh, sneaking in there. Hey, hey, finally in for another live. Oh, Cinderella. Did you get your package yet? You should have it any day now if you don't. Glad you made it for another live. Today, I'm very excited, you guys. We are painting a photo that my aunt took. My extremely talented aunt, Jacqueline Sinclair. You can see her Instagram down there on the hummingbird. Please go check her out. She does so many amazing uh, animal, well, really anything. She takes photos of everything. And I'm thinking that we're gonna start doing more of her photos for more of our paint nights because she does lots of great stuff that I think everyone will like. And it's just a way to promote us both, which is awesome. Um, she requested if you guys post them on Instagram, tag her in it. She would love to see. I'll tag her in the ones that you guys uh, share to your story. But uh, she did, there's a really cute deer that I think we should do of hers. Hello, God's Girl. Hello, Tay Tay. Hello, Buena. Hi, everybody. Great to see ya. Um, I changed it. It's not quarantine Tuesdays anymore because at least where I am, things are on the up and out. We're getting a little bit more normal. People are going back to work. So we don't have as many people joining us as much anymore because people are back to work, you guys. And what can you do? What can you do? Um, hello, anything. Uh, do, you did a new sketch. Of course, always send in your drawings to me on DMs, you guys. Uh, is my... Am I delayed again? Looking at it, it looks like I am. I don't really know why all of a sudden my audio would be off, but... It seems like it is. What else can we talk about? Okay, uh, I know there's some new folks. Oh, random guy. Hello. Some people are working. Others are drinking peppermint vodka on a Tuesday. There you go. Exactly. We're not all the same. Some people are still quarantined out. I woke up like two hours ago, so I, I was going to have a glass of wine with dinner slash breakfast, but then I was like, maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> Because it's 8 a.m. for me right now. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Who's new? Oh, thanks for sharing the broadcast, random guy, as always. Um, well, welcome to Pay Nights with your host, Tay Tayski. Um, we've been doing these for a while now, guys. I started in January. It's, well, before January. Doing um, just one a week. And then for quarantine, we came to twice a week, but I might slowly have to phase out back to just one. Um, I have a huge project I'm working on right now that needs a lot of my attention. Um, but I'll keep you guys posted with that. Uh, 8 a.m. also known as wine time. All times are wine time. <laughs> I like how you think, you guys. I like how you think. Hello, Infinite Silver. Good to see you. I'm great. How are you doing? We're painting a cutie hummingbird today. I think I'm going to make him a little bit more colorful than he is in the photo we see there, but that's just how I do things around here, right? We'll have some splatter, we'll have some color. That's always a good time. Okay, hello, YouTube people watching in the future. Thanks for watching. I appreciate how many people have been doing these uh, later and sending me, always send me, even if you do this in a couple years, send me a picture. I love seeing all of the paintings come out of these paint nights. Um, Housekeeping, I always say if you want to start with a pencil, feel free to start with a pencil. Some people are more comfortable with that. Um, I teach you how to paint it, but it's like I said, if you want to use a pencil, go for it. Just don't press too hard if you're on a canvas because the graphite will powder and muck up all your paint and you'll be pissed and I'll be pissed. Um, just kidding, it's just not a good time. Uh, trust the process is an important one that I should have stamped on my forehead like I always say. Um, because it's gonna look weird. It's gonna look weird. It's not gonna look like mine. All of them look different. Um, and some people give up halfway through and I don't approve of that, okay? You gotta trust the process. Hold out till the end. Your hummingbird will be beautiful, I promise. They just look odd in the middle. 
Um, what else do we got here? Please ask questions if you are in the live. I highly, highly request you asking questions for everyone. There's people who aren't on caffeine, so they can't comment. They're just at home. Or there's people watching the YouTube video that maybe your question will help. Um, because I, like I said, I just show up here with you guys and figure out how to paint it as we go. So, <laughs> I may not teach you perfectly. We're just all in this together, okay? We're all in this together. High School Musical Edition. Um, I try to do it the easiest, most simple, straightforward way, and then you can take it as far as you want. If you want to add more details, if you want to make it more intense, that's up to you, you guys. That's up to you. Um, what else we got? I am teaching with acrylic paint. It's easiest to do it with acrylic. You can do it with others, but... The only difference between other mediums is that you don't have white that will paint opaque on top of a color, and I work dark to light. So with us as acrylic people, it's so easy for us to put down dark, like a dark green, and then mix a little bit of white into our green and put that on top and it'll show up, but watercolor doesn't. So, this is my PSA at the start of the uh, day. You squint at that little hummingbird down at the bottom, you can kind of see where the darks and the lights are. Squinting kind of helps you um, differentiate between the values. So you just have to be aware of where the whites are because you don't want to paint on the white if you are watercolor. If you're acrylic, just listen to me. You can do what I'm doing. Um, thoughts on a rose-colored background? Beautiful. Again, you guys can paint whatever humming color hummingbird you want. Like, I am going to probably do a little bit of blues, greens, and yellows, and then a little bit of pink in its little throat spot. Um, but you can do whatever you want. Whatever color you want. Hello, who said hey, yay? Hello, hello. You missed my announcements. Oh, no. Hey, don't worry about it. My announcements are exactly the same every single time. <laughs> It's mostly just trust the process, have fun. You can't ruin the painting. Don't treat it too preciously. Like, it's hard to ruin a painting. If you don't like something, you can just paint right over top of it, okay? So don't treat it too precious. That's rule number a thousand. That's the most important rule of them all. Hello, Ray Bay. God's girl, I can't really check it this second, but I will. Don't worry. Um, I usually wait till about 10 after 8 before I start painting. No, no, random guy. It is not easy to mess up a painting. There's no such thing as mistakes. Right? Just happy accidents. <laughs> hey, if your cat walks on it, that is not a full lie. You're true, but you could potentially, maybe the cat paw prints spruce it up a little bit. You never know. Add a little bit of something more exciting in there. Exactly, Tay Tay. I am Barb Ross. I'll take it. I will take it. Um, okay, how many people we got painting today, you guys? This is my roll call here. Um... Cool, cool, cool. Okay, hello, Michelle and Alyssa, I imagine. You came in right at, right on the dot. We have one minute. It looks like a couple people are just sneaking in now, so... <laughs> Good, I'm glad it's we miss you when you guys aren't here. Okay, okay. You know what else I didn't do? I just remembered. I didn't do the outlines for you guys, but this one's easy too, so you're fine. I'm not stressed on that either. You have a computer drawing pad that you need to use to do with your paintings. Random guy, I love when people do the paintings digitally. I love when people do them in different mediums. It's fun to see like a different, different attempt, different style, different technique. There is a uh, streamer, his name's Fats here on, uh, on Caffeine, P-H-A-T-T-S. And he one day came in and did it on like Microsoft Paint. He did the peacock, right? The peacock was the first one. He did a really good job. I was very impressed. We haven't had him back since the fats. This is coming, I'm coming for you. Okay, okay. So, we'll be a little, I don't think this one's gonna take too long today either. So we can be, uh, we don't have to be too fast. What did I say I was gonna do first? 
Oh, we got a Fats fan. Fats, you admire him. He is really funny. I love his energy. Okay, let's see. What are we going to do? Should we start with some blue or green? Let's do blue. So. Blue. Nice. I said blue too, so we're good. I always forget to show you guys. Let's see here. Come on. I'm using a light blue permanent here if you want to see what she looks like. Whoop. Use whatever you want. Oh, now I just messed my camera fully. Come back to life. There we go. So, you can't see my palette, can you? Yeah, you can. Okay, good. So, I'm just going to use a little bit of blue on there. Again, you can use whatever color you want. Hello, Jaya Brooks. What is this just... Come on! There you go. And remember, if you want to start with pencil, feel free to start with pencil too. If you're on MS Paints, go on and whatever you want. I also do suggest it's usually easier to look at a picture. So if you're looking at a little screen and this hummingbird is too small for you, you can always go to my Instagram and screenshot the hummingbird on my story. My Instagram is Tatiski down here. Um, or Google a picture of a hummingbird. It's always helpful to look at something to draw, personally. Okay. Hummingbird, huh? Oh yeah, a hummingbird by my, a photo by my aunt. She lives in Vancouver and there's always hummingbirds in her front yard. Um, and she also goes and takes photos at Grouse Mountains. I love the way you said my name, Jaya Brooks. <laughs> I'm great, thank you. We're about to start a painting together as a group here. Meow, meow, exactly. Um, all right, sorry guys, my brain's just everywhere today. So you are going to take that little baby brush. We're going to start with something small. Am I really choppy to you guys? Let me know. Last stream was rough. This is going to be a pain you can't draw. Um, I'm teaching you how to draw. Don't worry. I'm confused why it's so... It should be fine. All my systems are a go. Okay, let's just go for it. Let's just go for it. Chop, chop, we're losing daylight. Exactly, let's go. Okay, <laughs> so you are going to scoop water from your water dish into your paint down here. Everyone, if I'm super choppy, try refreshing the browser and go from there. If that doesn't work, we're just... It's working on one of my computers, so it might be... I don't know, we'll see. Okay, so you see how I brought a bunch of water in down to our paint here and we're making like a chocolate milky consistency okay 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 so remember when you look at your whole canvas acknowledge the whole space because you want to use up as much as you can you don't want to draw him just so small in the middle you want to use the entire canvas so even like with your hand you can kind of like roughly draw where you think this cutie little hummingbird should go and why don't we just start with a little oval, just like an egg in the middle. Look at that. Remember, it's like okay if it's super rough, it's okay if it's super watery. You can do the lines a couple times until you get the shape that you want. We're gonna be painting right over this. But like, look, it's just like a little bean, a little egg. All right? Remember, we're gonna have to put wings here, we're gonna put out a head here, we're gonna put a tail here. So acknowledge the whole space. All right, here's a little oval, coo coo coo. Easy guys, take a breath, don't be stressed. And from that little dome body, we are going to do just a little circle. And the circle's not touching, it's a little like a smidgen. It's like a pinky's worth away from our little egg. Okay. How's that? What are we drawing? I don't know. A snowman, maybe. You need to practice using your shoulder. Was I using my shoulder? Maybe it was. Full arm 
movement, full body movement. <laughs> I guess I am using my shoulder. See, I don't even think about it. Okay, okay. So we've got a circle head. We've got a dome little egg body, right? Okay, and we are just going to draw one little line straight out right under, right at the top of our first egg. Just one little line. Just get that line in there. And then... Let's get just another line right beside it. We're gonna draw an equal sign, basically. Because we got his cute little back wing. And we got the line of his front wing. Yum. <laughs> what am I doing? Guys, look, since last time I've been on here, we got I got another sticker. Joe Exotic Taytacy sticker. Billie Eilish, two Daisy stickers. And this is custom art by Nat Coop. She's a cutie on Instagram too. Okay. You gotta stay hydrated, it's important. Especially because I don't sleep very much, you guys. So at least I gotta eat and drink water properly. Okay, so we've got two lines here. Sometimes it's easy if you want, you can make the bottom line to see how fat you want your wing to be. Sometimes it helps to have that point. But we're just gonna curve that line. And we're gonna bring it straight down. We're gonna paint some feathers on it at one point so it's okay if it's just a little sharp at the moment. How's that? Came by to say hi, thank you, Infinite Silver. You have a great day too. Thanks for stopping by. So you're trying to stay up till 4 a.m. Is there a reason? Is there a reason you want to stay up late? Okay. So we've got the egg, we've got the ball, we've got his little feathers. And from the bottom of our dome, on our oh, dome, I keep calling it a dome, of our little bean egg we've got here. We're just gonna bring a line straight down. Whoop. And just bring it straight back up. Guys, it's already a hummingbird, look at that. I kinda made his tail a little long, but that's what can you do. You're also a gamer, so you're gonna stay up for a new season. There you go. See, I work at nighttime. I like nighttime better, so I usually work from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. So we've got a little belly. I kind of made his tail a little long, but what can you do? I'll fix that after. All right, so we have his little head. And from the bottom of our bean, we're going to bring her on right up. See that line there to make a little neck? Whoop. What am I looking at here? Okay. It does have a little foot right there, but we can figure that out later. Okay, and then the cute little beak is gonna come right out the top. Do just a straight line if you want. And bring it on back. How is that? Is that looking like a hummingbird, you guys? 
how do you paint work for so long when you're painting your back always starts to hurt? <laughs> well, <laughs> I have permanent back pain always. <laughs> But I move a lot, so I work on lots of paintings at once, so I always shuffle around. I try to do jumping bit of jacks every <laughs> hour or two. <laughs> I roll out my back as much as I can, but as you can see, like this is my like natural, <laughs> comfortable posture. <laughs> so I'm trying to get better at sitting straight, you guys. Okay. How's that? Looks like a hummingbird, I think. Looks like a bird. Like a bird, but not a hummingbird. Is that what we're saying? We got to make him more hummingbird-esque. So what I'm saying is I need postural exercises. Oh yeah, Michelle, that's your cup of tea. Yeah, 9,000%. <laughs> you know that your back is bad that every time you go to a new chiropractor, they're like shocked and ask how old you are. And they're like, you got a back like an 80 year old woman. <laughs> I'm just under 30, it's fine. <laughs> okay, so his wing is gonna come in a little bit. Right, 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 okay. I'll see where you guys are at. Yeah, they grow up so fast, you're right. So the only thing that I think is different is, yeah, his tail's a little too long. So we, you should be still using your pencil, but right at, up to this point, yes, but now we're going to, pen, to paint. Paint time now, if you have been using your pencils. Because we've got the shape down, okay? Okay, okay, okay. All right, guys. So whatever color that you are just using, we are going to be coloring in some spots. Um, one thing that is nice about acrylic paint, like I was mentioning before, is that you can cover up a lot of your mistakes. So like I was saying, oh, I think I made his tail a little bit too long. He's a little too big. Once this dries, I'm going to go over top of it with white and just erase that problem. Just hide it. Literally white it out, right? Okay, so I'm getting a bigger brush out and I'm still using whatever color you guys started with. I'm still using this blue. And it's okay if you have a little bit more paint than water on your brush now. It doesn't have to be that like chocolate milky consistency that we were dealing with before. And you're just gonna fill in a couple spots of blue, okay? So we're gonna bring some blue in his little tail. We're gonna bring some blue in just that like shoulder part of his wings. Mechanical pencils are the most useful tools. I agree with you there. Zijon? Zijon? Zijon. How do you pronounce Z's or Z's? What's the Canadian way? Z? Z? Okay, there's a little pin. Do, 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 do. Okay, it's really okay if you color in the whole thing, really. Who are we kidding? We're gonna put some white over top of there. Except for his little wings. That's a hummingbird, I think. Okay, okay. And like I mentioned every time, I'm always very conscious of my brush strokes, of which direction that you're putting them. Just kind of like with pencil crayons or whatever. If you are always going in the same direction, it kind of just makes it more smooth and it helps you imply the shape without having to, um, without having to paint more detail. It gives you, sorry, I just read a comment. My brain went, whoop. <laughs> 
right out the door. Um, so like for example, his belly, all of his little furs go up and down. His furs, I think they're feathers. So I'm always conscious of br using my brush stroke top to bottom, top to bottom, not left and right. Because then it just kind of helps imply some of that texture already. And you can even do a couple lines if you want in its wings. No rhyme or reason, but again, conscious of direction at least. You don't have to pronounce it right. It's like actually spelled like Jan. Mm. You're gurring at the fur. I think it's pretty cute. I think my problem is I drew him too. I think his wings need to be bigger. Man, they're so cute. Realistically, we could go back to one of my other paint nights after this and you could like paint a flower down here if you want to. Like the bumblebee paint night has a flower on it. If you wanna. We gotta let this dry a little bit so we're just gonna hang out for a second. Huh. Are we feeling okay so far, you guys? When there's silence from the class, I never know. Give me one second, I'm gonna be right back, but you keep coloring that blue or whatever color you want in there. Need to practice more of class to be able to do the stuff. No, no, you just gotta trust the process. Remember? Like, look, I'll show you this up close. Like, it's messy. She ain't. It's, it ain't good right now. Don't worry. But I'm gonna trust the process. I just gonna turn out great. Did I watch Thirteen Reasons Why on Netflix? I watched the first two seasons. At least the first one, for sure. Yeah, but that's okay. The only way that you're going to get better at drawing is to keep drawing more. That's it. That's why when people are like... People always say that... Um, uh, what was I going to say? Like, when people say, like, oh, you're so talented, or it's a God's gift, but... I think it's like you just put in the time. I've just painted so many paintings. Like I, I better be good at it by now. What's that like thing? A hundred. We always say it. I always mess it up. Ten thousand hours, hundred thousand hours, or whatever. I've exceeded it. <laughs> so that's all you gotta do. Is just do it more. Do it more. Try to draw the same thing every day for a month, and by the end of that month, that drawing will be amazing. And then you like lock it into your art brain. Like for a school project at ACAD, I had to draw a camel and I had to mix a camel with a human, but it had to be anatomically correct. Um, so I did lots of research on um, camels and humans. <laughs> and, um, I drew so many camels that now I can draw a camel out of my brain while I can't draw other things out of my brain unless I look at a picture. But you just like get that practice in there, I guess, if that makes sense. Brody just walked up and said, look at that cutie. <laughs> Sorry, I'm infiltrating your children. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so cute. Here we go. Um, and you guys want to see the project? Okay, I will I think I have him here. Hold up.
Okay, you guys, sorry for the tangent, but this was from an anatomy class, so I had to combine a human and a camel. So the first layer, here's my fat camel. He was a character, he was fat and lazy. And then if you like flip it up, this is his like muscle layer. And they're like anatomically correct muscles combined between a camel and a human. And then on the bottom, oh my gosh, is his skeletal layer. And I had to like learn how like if somebody's like super over like overweight, their pelvis is like more is wider so it can carry everything. And like I had to make his not his kneecaps the right size and stuff. And like figure out how many neck vertebrae he would have. Oops, over here. Ah! <laughs> this is what you do in art college. Things like this. So that's him. I think you named him. What did I name him? I don't even remember. But uh, that's from like 2013, maybe. Anyway, sorry for the tangent, you guys. Let's get back to business here. Okay, do okay. Let's do it. Okay, so I'm gonna get some green out because I want this cutie to just like pop and be super colorful. Um, here is vivid lime green is what I'm gonna go with. I don't know, that could be fun. And you're gonna take a smaller paintbrush. But not as tiny as we are starting before, just a little bit bigger than the first one. Okay. And the one thing that we are going to do, it would probably be best if your paint, your blue or whatever color you're using underneath is dry first. But we are going to paint on his little feathers. So when I was talking before about being very conscious of your brush strokes, um, 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 we're going to want lots of paint on our brush, not more paint than water. And like, take a look at, see how he has his cute little, little, what you call them, feathers are kind of, show you, I'll bring it closer to you. I'm just doing little slobs of green and almost like a checkered pattern. Do you see? There's a little checkered. Hello, Dresden. Evening take question. Was that camel on Duralar? Duralar? What's Duralar? I don't even know what that is. I made that camel up from my brain. <laughs> because in art school, I loved drawing and painting like large, like I just, because bigger people have so much more like curves and like beautiful and like shapes and details and things to draw. So I always would just like all my characters were big and chubby and voluptuous and I love them. So I drew lots of nice little chubby characters because it was just so fun. And like he had like a big like belly um, and my teacher made me go look at like beer guts. He's like, you have to go, your eyes are gonna bleed but you have to go onto Google images and you have to Google beer guts and beer bellies and see how they work and how the like his belly button would fold over. Like it was, I did a lot of research you guys to paint that guy. Oh, it's a slick paper that takes ink really sharp. Um, okay, it is, uh, it's like Mylar, I think it was called. Is Mylar, does that sound right? It's like a tracing paper of some sort. Um, I thought you were talking about a show. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> But I think it was Mylar. Oh, hello, you're late, that's okay. We are just painting some cute little green feathers on this little hummingbird. And remember guys, you wanna see that blue underneath? Yeah, 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 I can totally bring it closer. I'm not doing it super preciously either, like some are overlapping on each other, but you do wanna be able to see that blue underneath. Wow, the green looks really crappy on screen to you guys, sorry. And yeah, so that project was for an anatomy class because anatomy illustration, like medical illustration is very, it's a very high paying job in the illustration community. 
So we did, like, we learned everything about every muscle, about all the joints, how to draw them properly. And then the project, since we were character designers, we had to make a character out of an animal that was mixed with a human. So mine was just, like, fat and hilarious. <laughs> Some people had really serious characters. I remember one girl had, like, a pregnant one. But then she had to look at how, like, your bones and hips and everything move when you're pregnant. And it was just super cool. It was super cool. And so we're just gonna fill the top of this little cutie's head. Even closer maybe, does that help? Come on, come on, come on, come on, focus. There we go. See how she's just like slobbed, slobbed on there? My favorite word. Also, I'm laughing, Dresden, at how you did camel in parentheses. <laughs> I remember his name started with a B. It was something like Bruce or something. And then I even had to like, like his knees and stuff are like matted. His hair is matted because he had, like realistically he couldn't like wash his legs properly, right? Like we had to get into detail, you guys. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, you just color pictures in art school. It's like, no. I had to go look at medical books and then animal medical books to figure out how camels' bodies worked. It was a journey. Brings me back. You love hummingbirds? This is actually a photo from my aunt. Her, I don't know if this was at her house or where exactly, but she lives in Vancouver and she takes photos of these cutie little hummingbirds. So we're doing this in the name of my auntie Jacqueline today. I'm also going to do just a little green line on the edge of the wings. My aunt took a great pic. You guys, you should go to her Instagram, Jacqueline Sinclair down there. And uh, she went to, when my parents just went to Africa in January, she was there with them and she took so many amazing photos on their safaris. So here's some green, you guys. How's this feeling? Okay, here I'm missing some comments here. Um, that was a really good anthropomorphic study. Anthrop anthropomorphic. I can't read, sorry. Thank you. It was cool. It was an amazing project. You guys, ACAD taught me how to work very hard, and I loved every minute of it. Um, what do I think about realistic artistic? Hey, I can I can paint realistic too. It's a it's hard and skillful and tough. Um, don't worry, Tay-Tay, I'll get there in a second. Um, but I personally just, that's not fun for me. I think it's amazing when people can do it. But for me, it's like, I would rather, why make a painting of what looks like a picture? Why not try to make it something else? So that's just my opinion. I'm too lazy to paint realistic. <laughs> if a painting takes me a long time, I'm over it really quickly. Okay, so everyone, do we see where we put some greens? We've got just across the top of his arms, we've got the top of his head, a little bit on his belly, on his little tail. And remember, if I don't put, you can put the color wherever you want. It doesn't have to be, I love when you guys just like freestyle it and go with whatever you want. That's super cool. And you thought cutie was my favorite word. <laughs> hey, see, look. Look at me contradicting my life, you're right. See, so yeah, realistic drawing takes so long you don't wanna be working on art for hours and I'm exactly the same. I lose interest very quickly if a painting takes me a long time, but that there's some people who that's what, they're very particular and they love every detail and getting zoned into something for hours is like what they like. So that's the cool thing about art. Do whatever you want. Okay. Okay. I am taking out some white. And I might even just show you guys something a little different today. Um, Justo, thanks for the popcorn. Hey, cutie. Have a couple of you sent me, let's see. I've been listening to the same playlist every time, sorry guys. Okay, so we got some white on here. 
And thanks for the hard anything. Okay, we've got the green on there. We've got the blue underneath. Now we're going to start adding some color, like some white on there to start differentiating, differentiating some shapes. So we're going to go in with that same size brush. We're going to go into the white and also into the green a little bit. You just want to brighten up the green we were just using or whatever color you were just using. With a little bit of white in there. You see you just brighten it. Oh, that looks like just white to you. That sucks. Trust me that it's light green. And again, let's be very conscious of our brush strokes, okay? We're going to start at the top of its head. And we are going to go kind of over top the greens that we did, but always be conscious. I'll bring it closer, don't worry. Of seeing the colors underneath. The green layer, the blue layer, we want to see every color because that's the that's why we're layering it. We want to add lots of depth and make the painting feel complete. Catch you, Tan, on another stream. See ya. Thank you. I'm going to call you Z. Thanks, Z. I appreciate it. Have a good day. Okay. So C, super close. We just put a little bit of that white. Did I say hi, Monster Clown? Sorry. Z with a silent eye. <laughs> and in his chest, we're gonna go in the spot that we didn't put that green, but you still wanna see the blue underneath, still be, it's these little textured brush strokes that are gonna make him look like he has the nice little feathers that he actually does. See that there? And again, you want lots of brush. Um, <laughs> hey, you'll come here for the laughs. That's one thing I'm not short of. At <laughs> <laughs> on Tay Tay's excuse me. Uh, okay, um, what was I saying? You are, you want a good amount of paint on your brush, not, I mean, on paint versus water. Because you want it to go on kind of more opaque. And same up here, we'll do a couple lines, and I know it feels redundant because we already went over there with the darker green. But like I said, it's all about them layers. And where else does he have some white? We're gonna put some down by his little butt. And how about let's do some more on his little back. So what I was saying earlier about saying how we're gonna do something different than what I usually do but it's kind of a fun way to make. I'm obviously using very unnatural colors and that most peacocks aren't this bright. I just called him a peacock. Every time we paint a different bird, I just call it the last bird that we painted. Um, they're usually not this bright in color, but something that's cool that you can do instead of just using the browns and the dark colors that we're seeing in here, if you paint the underneath super bright and then put some of those darker colors on top, um, it'll really add a lot of like life to your natural colored pictures if that makes sense kenzie coming in bird watchers everywhere are offended a hundred percent i'm sure lots of people get offended by my misuse of words and terms <laughs> on live here just giving you guys false information left right and center <laughs> okay do we see all those kind of cute textures coming together I'm gonna be honest with you guys today that 
I did not prep for this paint night at all. <laughs> I've been disgustingly slammed, so I am figuring this out even more on the fly than usual. We're just going to put a little bit of that light green right behind his neck and before the first wing as well. Right here. Kind of like the llama. Yeah, I think I... I think we actually painted like an alpaca instead of a llama by accident. I didn't even know. Okay, here we go. I got a couple pictures. Let's, uh, I'll show you guys these ones for now. Check out that. QT. And that one too. Guys, ooh, I'm liking the colors. See the blues? Your blue look like that's what my blue looks like on my screen, but why isn't my camera picking it up? Your beak is too fat. Okay, well, hey, we could, we're gonna do that white out special, okay? Am I showing, is it, okay. All you really have to do is go with pure white on your paintbrush. I'll keep it up so that everyone else can see what we're talking about here. And I'll just, for example, do it on mine here. You're gonna make sure your beak is fully dry though. Make sure it's dry first. And with pure white on your brush, not a lot of water, more paint than water. You're just gonna go on the bottom of your beak and literally just paint a swipe of pure white and see how instantly the beak is skinnier because you're like literally whiting out half of, half of it. If I bring it close, you'll probably be able to see a little better. See that? Try that, Ashlyn. Ashley. For anyone, like, see, now we're just doing that right now, I might as well, like, if I was worried that his tail was too long. So I can go in with my white like this. And just, like, white away my mistakes. Whoops. And for some of you, sometimes your canvas isn't the same color as your white. So sometimes when you have to do that, it's best to probably go around your whole flaming... <laughs> I don't know why I want to call it a flamingo. Go around your whole hummingbird and you can like fix up some of your little whoopsies if you want. Do you see what I'm saying? And that's why my paintings, oh, that's how I do every single painting I do in my whole career. Um, like, oh, the eye looks off. I'll just color, I'll white out a little spot of it until it looks the way that I want it to, and then I layer on top of that, and it just goes and goes and goes from there. How about that? Does that help, you guys? See, like, I made his tail a little bit smaller. His beak looks better. Beautiful. A Pimingo Mingbird. <laughs> Flamingo Peacock Hungbird, all the same. Yeah, sorry, guys. Also, fat beaks matter. All beaks are beautiful. You guys kill me. And Alicia, the fact you still do this is so special. Hey, I got you guys. I like doing them too. Don't worry, I like doing them too. I just can't think about them much uh, outside of it. <laughs> That's all. Wow, ooh, I'm liking the red and the blue. That's fun. Ooh, yeah, I like that. I like that. Look at these little cuties. Ooh, check this one out on the black background, girl. Wow, that's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Oh, and then, so uh, if that ever happens for you, Alicia, you just have to use black instead of white if you ever wanna white out anything. Um, perfect, this one, I love the colors too. Oh, see yours is more, yeah, yours is the perfect little tail. You gave me advice on gold and you're using both. Perfect. Guys, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Look at all these little guys. Beautiful. Killing it as usual. Hello, Samantha. Let's get that out of the way there. So, what do we've got? We've got... Fat beaks and skinny beaks. We've got multicolored, cutie little hummingbirds. We've, we're laying down texture, which is a lot of this piece. A lot of it is just laying down um, shapes and colors. 
Uh, let's put in, so in this little hummingbird, he has a little colored, like we can call it a beard, but like just a little bit of a different color in his neck. Go for whatever color you want. I just love pink, so I'm gonna put pink in there. Um, somebody already did a pink one. You can put purple in there. You can put orange in there. Whatever you want. I'm actually use my favorite pink. I don't, it's, I don't know if you can buy it everywhere. I've had to special order it, but I probably shouldn't even be showing you guys that. This is my, even though I have every paint night. This is just my signature pink. Like no other pink compares. Okay. Okay. What are we doing? We're still using a little brush. You can still be using that medium sized brush this whole time. Paint envy. <laughs> Sorry guys. <laughs> but I'm not kidding. Like I've had, I've ordered, I have many of it because if, when I run out, it's a, it's a scary day. So I back order the crap out of those. Okay. So guys, there's nothing like super crazy about this. We're doing the same thing. You're using more paint than water on your brush, using a little brush, being conscious of the brush strokes, which direction you're putting them, blah, blah, blah. Oh, the sun hits me in a weird time today. Oh well, okay. And we are just gonna paint a cute little beard on this flamingo. Uh, oh my God, you guys. Hummingbird. <laughs> okay. How's that? <laughs> Does it look weird right now? Yes. Is that okay? Yes, it is. I'm just gonna bring another blue out because my blue's just not showing up as nice as it should like your guys's are. I'm just taking out a pithylo cyanide blue green shade. <laughs> Except I got paint on it so you might not even be able to read it. Come on camera, you can do it. Nope, you're just gonna have to try, oh, there we go. Pithylo cyanide blue green shade. <laughs> I'm actually getting blinded by sun when the sun changes so much every day here. Can't see. Uh, <laughs> it's like reflecting off a painting. Get out of here. There we go. It's reflecting off of this card into my eyeballs. Thigh low blue. Thigh low blue? Pathigh low. Okay, 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 here we go. So I brought out just a darker blue so that I can differentiate because it looks like on your guys' you're getting way better contrast. <laughs> so if your blue is dark enough, don't worry about this. If you're having the same problem as me here, let's get some darker blue out. I'm still using the same little brush. And I am going to, let's just do, let's see, one dark line under there. What time is it? We're at 8.55. Okay, okay, okay. We cool, we cool. Okay, so see, there's a nicer differentiation with that color. Let's make... Let's see. Okay, so... Sorry I'm leading you astray today. So see now how that pops out so much nicer with that dark blue underneath. So I'm thinking if you have a darker blue, cool, use that blue. If you don't have a darker blue than what you're using originally, maybe like a purple. If I'm annoying and I just led you all stray, let me know. <laughs> but we are just going to darken up where all the shadows will be with this darker color, whether it's a blue, whether it's a purple, whether it's black mixed with your blue, but if you do that, put the tiniest hint of black in there ever, because black is the most powerful pigment and it'll take over any color you use. Okay. 
How's that? How's that? Nice to have a little bit of differentiation in there. Rainbow hummingbird today, I guess. Hey, and for his tail at the bottom, we want to put some darker blues in there. So, our hummingbirds kind of coming together just a little bit. Again, always good to squint at the picture you're looking. Because the more you guys do this, I want you guys, like there's some of you, Janessa, I don't know if you're out there right now, but there's, she's one of them. There's a lot of people who have been taking the techniques they're learning and putting them to other paintings and i think that is so cool and you guys have been sending them to me and i love it so i feel like the more you come to i'm like trying to teach you how to see how i do or how to like look at a picture and do it yourself right so always like squint and look at the picture and try to see like what i'm seeing and how i'm trying to translate it onto the painting my hands are dirty and i'm just getting blue paint everywhere Do a couple strokes for behind him. And we can draw on. Don't worry, because we're still going to paint over this again with another color, but we can still draw on his wing lines. Let's come in. So weird that it's light outside still. Usually it'd be dark by the time I start paint night. Good old Canada, it's just keeping getting lighter and lighter. You can still around his little beard even make some of this darker blue too. Almost summer, exactly. It's nice though. Things are opening up again. Guys, I get my lashes done tomorrow. Yeah. I'm never putting on mascara and eyeliner ever again. Good riddance. <laughs> I don't know how you girls do it. I'll be back to myself. <laughs> Dan's probably so annoyed. He's like, go get your lashes done so you can stop talking about it. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna bring them closer. It's all just about like the layering on these guys. Just gonna give him some swipes on his cutie little belly. Erica, I think that's so funny about your little son saying, look at that cutie. <laughs> I love that. It's so funny, one of my friends was telling me too, her daughter, she you guys, if you guys have been following her along, you have seen her. Oh, I thought you said son. <laughs> Sorry, even funnier that it's your husband. Right, your son's too small to to say cutie. <laughs> your son is a baby. <laughs> that is so funny. Sorry, husband. Wait, let me remember what his name is now. Where are you on here? 
Brody. Sorry, Brody. <laughs> yeah, I'd be super impressed if Nash said that sentence. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> I'm not infiltrating your children, I'm infiltrating your husband. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. But uh, what was I saying? One of my girlfriends, her little her little girl, Margot, she's come to... You've seen some of her paint nights if you've been following my stories after I post about them. And she's so good too, and she's so young. I think she's like four or something, or five, so cute. And uh, she thinks I'm famous, so now whenever she sees girls on TV, she goes, that's Tay. <laughs> and she's like, no, no, honey. <laughs> I love it so much. That's Tay the artist. <laughs> I'll take it. If little girls think I'm famous, that's all I need. <laughs> okay, how are hummingbirds, you guys? Are we happy so far? We can even bring down like his little armpit hair a little bit. And I'm just outlining stuff while I wait to make sure that y'all are okay. And then we will start adding some other just colors in there. Cute little pink beard. And look at it, like I said, it's it's not clean. When you look at it close, she's messy. But as long as it looks good from far away, <laughs> who cares? <laughs> That's so funny that I called your husband your son. Uh, okay. We've got some more photos. Let's check it out. Let's see if there's any in my requests. Okay, let's see. We look like we've got some examples. We were on that one before. Let's refresh it. Oh, so cute. Nice wings already. Oh my gosh, wow. You guys are all so textured and beautiful. I think Laura Bear's doing a different one. Oh, she got a package. Oops, I just blindly went to somebody else's. Okay, right, we saw these ones. Right, right, right. Who else we got? Oh, I love their little pink beards. Wow, Flamingo, look at those colors. Oops, sorry, I just, it's supposed to be anonymous and I just said your name, but ah, looks beautiful. <laughs> sorry guys, don't be scared to send in your stuff if you don't. <laughs> okay, good, Flamingo doesn't care. <laughs> Hello, King Moment, Mo, King Moaming? Did I say it? <laughs> just butchering usernames all day today. Hello, kiddo. Tay to Tay Tay. Okay, you guys, we're getting to an interesting part, all right? We're gonna get some black out. Oh, never open these, good. So the reason I say we're getting to an in interesting part <clears throat> is you can kind of decide what you want, which direction that you want to go with this one. Um, first, we're going to do, don't worry, we'll do some, this first step, everybody do it. Uh, we're going to just color in his eyeball and like his little feeties and stuff like that. Um, but remember how I was talking about how you can paint natural colors on top of the colorful um, ones if you'd like. So first we'll do the eye and then we'll go after that. Okay, yeah, is it choppy for other people? I don't understand. Oh, I understand. Gosh darn it. OK, 
Okay, you guys, I just realized that my computer wasn't plugged into the internet, so... Ugh! That makes me so mad that it is choppy. My OBS is fine, so I don't know if it is... If plugging it in will make a difference. But last week was weird because my voice didn't match. Even the, my recording, so it was OBS last week, but this week my OBS looks like it's okay. That makes me mad. I'm sorry, you guys. Damn it! Hopefully the video will get a little bit better now that that's plugged in. Uh, okay, okay, okay. The only problem with stopping stream and starting ASAP is my video. I go right to YouTube. So if I stop and go, then the video's dead. Then I have to edit it and I don't have the time to edit it. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. My voice is fine this time. Okay, well, that's good. Maybe a couple minutes of being plugged in will solve the day a little bit. <laughs> I hate technology. It never works for me. Okay. So we're just going to go for this eyeball. Sorry, guys, that it's crappy today. So I didn't change my hair. It's just not... I haven't dyed it in a while, and my, I haven't shaved this in a while. I'm just disheveled, you guys. <laughs> it's better for you when you're refreshed. Okay, good. It does. I'm looking at my screen, and it looks way better now, too. That's the problem. It is blue, but it's light outside right now, kiddo. This is a problem in good darn old Canada. It um, gets, it stays lighter during the summertime later. So now it doesn't get dark till like 1030. Oh, you guys, there we go. That was a problem. Sorry that I was an idiot and didn't have you plugged in the whole time. <laughs> dumb, dumb idiot. <laughs> okay. So maybe by the end of the stream, it'll be our cool dark blue. But look, you can kind of see the blues just, it's just, it's just hidden by this sunlight. I hate the sun. <laughs> okay. Sorry, guys. That's good thing. It just took me an hour to, you guys had to go through that. We are with pure black and a little paintbrush. Just going to paint a big old eyeball in there. Not to the pink, I just added black right to the circle. The only space there's black is his eyeball. Black, pink. Guys, I'm a noob, I don't get anything. <laughs> okay, right, so we got that little eyeball in there. You can even do one little black swipe under his beak if you want. Keep it blue if you don't care. And then, of course, let's put his little claws. And they're literally just going to be like little backward C's. Like one, two. Hummingbirds, yeah. I know I didn't change my body. See, look, guys, I'm just behind in life right now. So we are gonna paint next uh, Thursday is gonna be Father's Day themed. You guys, we are gonna do something like fishing, like canoey fishing, Father's Day ish themed. So Thursday's Father's Day paint night, and then like I said. Playing with balls or something, you know? I don't know. <laughs> okay. okay, Alicia. Yes, you didn't you suggest it to me, actually, Alicia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so cool. We'll do that. Um, someone else also mentioned Mrs. Crack Max also requested that we do something beers. Hey, no problem. Something beer, something dad related is what I meant to say. But it makes sense, why not? Everyone paints them for their fajas. A big old mug of beer. 
NFL related. See, that's tough. Like, my dad doesn't watch the NFL. I guess my dad doesn't really fish either, though. Okay, so what? We got some little C's for some little claws under here. We've got some black petals for petals, feathers for his little butt tail. So this is where you can decide if you want to do the bump back. So we'll put a little bit of darker natural colors on top of our very bright colors to try to like kind of, I don't know, like tone him down a little bit. Um, but if you like to be the bright, obnoxious color like I always like to do, it's cool. Stay with that, okay? And you can kind of, as you see these next steps that I'm doing, you can do this with the, all the colors you have on your palette. But for people who want to try to do this little, like, bump back the colors to make him look a little bit more realistic, um, we're going to take the same brush. You're gonna have some black on it, but like the tiniest amount of black. And you're gonna go into your blue. And of course you want more blue than black because what have I said before? Black's dangerous. It'll overcome your whole painting or your whole colors. I'm gonna use the dark blue. So it's almost gonna make like a navy. It looks just like black probably, but look, if I put it on my hand, it's, uh, see, it's a little like navy almost. I feel like this song isn't uncopyrighted. Watching and listening tips while I know I ain't doing any of it ever. Hey, you're not the only one. Don't worry. There's a lot of people that don't paint along. And then there's some people who paint along, but they don't paint what I'm painting. They just paint and hang out. They paint whatever they want. Okay, and so again, it's gonna feel a little redundant, but we're just adding more texture. We're gonna go over some of these dark spots with this dark black blue. Right? And just darken up. Because if we use pure black, it'll be very obvious. But if we put in this nice dark blue black, it adds a little bit more color and a little more fun. Black can suck the life out of everything. And I know it sounds like I'm just hating on black, but black is actually very handy. <laughs> and let's put a couple swipes of that dark black. And we're going to do this with the green as well. We're going to make a greeny black color. And we're going to kind of fill in some of the rest of the spots, okay? Let's go to his belly and add some. And remember, you want it to be just kind of like patterned in a sense. Like there's not exact, because like I've said in other things before, exact. Um... In nature, things aren't exactly symmetrical and exactly the same. Um, so when you paint stuff exactly, like if every single one of these little petals was a millimeter apart, it would look very obvious and your eye would be able to tell. So it's okay that it's a little bit no rhyme or reason and they're a little crazy because that's what it would look like in the real world. Am I right? Am I right? I'm just going to keep... Darkening up some of these spots. And like I said, if you want to keep that rainbow theme, you go with just pure color. Don't add in black into it. <laughs> but no, there is a girl in art school. I'm not going to shout. Well, <laughs> a girl in our class. I was going to say, I won't show you out. And I was about to say her name, but. That was a problem that she had. She would always make stuff, like even like stars in the sky, just like naturally her her body or her brain would just put all the dots exactly separated. And then you could literally from far away see like it looked like a pattern. So it's like, that doesn't look like the sky because it was too exact. So that's why people, I always like, it might be annoying, but I always, I'm like, guys, <laughs> don't treat it precious. How's that? We've... Look, like that's almost, to me, that is too perfect. Like they're all exactly the same distance away. So I'm just gonna kind of mess with a little bit of them. Do 
You come for all the snacks. Hey, last week we painted a cupcake and everyone was just like hungry the whole time. Okay, so we got a little belly. We've darkened up some spots here. Maybe let's put some on his tail too. Why not? Because again, squint at that bird and see where the dark spots are. Okay. Yeah. And we're going to do it with the green now. Don't worry, guys, if you are not doing this natural, natural looking color with the black in it. This is our last step, and then we'll all be back on the same steps again, okay? I'm still using the same brush. Oh, hey, Carlos. Hello, Tadwe. Okay, so we're doing that same old thing with our green, but just a little touch of black in there because, like, look at how overpowering, if you guys can even see that far. The black literally just ate the green in a second. Let's see how it's, like, a dark... <laughs> it looks so crappy on the screen to you guys. That looks cool. Thank you. And again, we don't want that chocolate milk consistency. We want a little bit more paint in our brush. And now we're going to go over some of these spots. And remember, always, always, always make sure that you are paying attention to your brush strokes, directions, and always showing some of the color underneath because that was the whole point. Why would you want to color up, cover up what we were doing? We want to show all the work that we've done. This is so pretty like me. Thanks, God's girl, you sweet thing. But see how just adding the black in, like this green is the same as this green, but now we've got a little bit more natural found in, in, in nature color versus the lime green that we were using before. And again, we're just going to go on a couple spots. And I will say now too, because it happens all the time, sometimes people do something and they liked their painting before they did it. So for example, maybe you have done this black technique and you don't like it and now you feel like your painting is ruined. Well, stop, don't keep doing it. I would wait for them to dry, wait for wherever you put this dark green to dry. And then you'll go over it with that bright green again. It doesn't matter, you'll just hide it. Like I know somebody, I don't know if you're here today, but she did the VW bug and she loved it until she painted the background a specific color and she hated the background. And so then she thought it was ruined. And I said, girl, wait for it to dry and paint white over top that background. And maybe it'll have to dry and you have to paint one more layer of white, but then it'll be back to almost exactly what you had before. And she did and it was fine. So that's what I mean by you can't ruin it. Look, Flamingo Crafts painted over the llama like a thousand times, like a hundred times before she liked it. There you go. You guys, I get, I put paintings in timeout sometimes. <laughs> and I just like hate it and I've done it so many layers on it and I will put it in my closet and face the wall so that it's in a timeout and I don't look at it. And then I come back to it later with fresh eyes and you can try again, put some more layers on top. Usually it only needs one time out, but sometimes, sometimes things are there for a while. Okay, guys, see that, look. Got it a little bit more natural colored. Some people don't like to do obnoxious rainbow things like I do, that's fine. <laughs> I'm actually, this is probably gonna be annoying and I'm sorry that I didn't tell you to do this before, but if you take that color that you, whatever base color you, um, the second color you use, like where I use the lime green, not the black green, but the lime green, I'm just gonna like lightly, just roughly put that color in these wings. We're gonna go over it with white so it doesn't have to be clean. Like look, I didn't even fill in all the spots just to get some color in there. Oops. 
And this one's just fun, just like putting little dots all over him, putting little textures all over him. You can play with color, you can use every color in the rainbow. We're gonna let that dry for a little second and then we're gonna go in with some white because you all know how white highlight brings everything together. And I didn't even think about background on this one. How should we paint? I know someone did a rose background, right? Someone was saying, how do we feel about a nice rose background? We did a seahorse a couple days ago and Rosie, the masterful six-year-old painter, she just freestyled her background and it was so much better than mine. It was beautiful. Oh, okay, here this. Remember someone was saying they were doing two? Check that out. Rose color, yeah, 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 there we go. It's beautiful. Oh, look at them, they're so fluffy and cute. Into it, into it, into it, love it. I don't think the other ones. Oh. oh, see, look at the reference. Oh, I didn't even see you earlier. Look at the, look at Michelle, the perfect student, picking up a reference and using that to show her colors. Oh, oh. Proud teacher moments. <laughs> okay, love it, perfect, okay. Perfect. We're gonna let that dry for a second here while I just check something quick. The purple one, I know, so pretty. You guys are killing it. know what type of berry this is? Do you know what type of what it's called? Golden berry. Golden? Golden. Oh, golden. I don't know how I feel about it. So what? Hmm? There's like seeds in the inside. Weird. They're like kind of sour. Gooseberries. Someone said gooseberries. Guys, I don't know how I feel about them. It makes me like, you're making me eat it? <laughs> it's good for you. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, you're making the same face. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> From Dan? Yeah, it was Dan. <laughs> Guys, I don't know how I feel about it. Yeah, Daniel's home. <laughs> oh, they're interesting. They're like kind of sour. There's lots of seeds in them. Okay. All right, everybody. Interesting. I like seeds in my teeth. Okay. <laughs> Sorry for the distraction. Let's get back to hummingbirds. Um, let's go, ooh, my paintbrush is dirty. We're gonna go into pure white. We just want some pure white right now. And remember, so if you were somebody who has whited out certain parts of, um, 
who've whited out certain parts like I have, sometimes your white will show up. So like I was saying before, sometimes it's good to make that white go all the way around your whole thing. So when you paint the background on top of it, certain parts won't react differently than other parts. So it'll feel more unison, if that makes sense. Um, I just have to make sure Okay. Okay, okay, okay. We're getting white out. And we want more like paint than water. You still want water on your brush because water is your friend, you guys. Water will help the paint and your paintbrush move across the uh, canvas. But we're just gonna go on that good old white highlight spree that I love so much. Let's start with just doing one little white dot inside of that eyeball because how cute does that dot just make him? I don't know what it is about that white dot, but I love it with all my life and that white highlight. I mean, eye highlight. And we're gonna do one little white line on top of his cute little nose. Gives them a little sparkle, exactly. And with that white on our brush, remember there is some water in there. We don't want it to be pure. Oh, I just slobbed my hand in the paint there. We do want water on our brush because we do want it to be a little bit translucent, okay? And you're gonna go over these wings, okay? Remember where we put some color in there? You're gonna play a little bit of keep away Oh, good. Ellie is telling, is helping the class. Yes. Get, if your water is all mucky, it's like a different color, um, cause we've been using dark colors, 110% empty it, get clean water. Because just like I was saying before, how the graphite dust can mix in with your paint, there's pigment of paint in the water and it will go right into your white and it'll make it mucky. Mucky is the best word. I don't know. I don't know what the appropriate one is, but when you're painting these wings on, you kind of want just little bits again. You're gonna play keep away from every line that you draw because you want to show all those. <laughs> I hate that the sun is here right now. <laughs> Damn it. Um, again, you wanna show all of those layers and all those colors and all that work that we've done, but we are cleaning it up with white on top with a little bit of water in that paint so that you can see the colors poke through. It almost makes it look a little translucent. Ah, oh, Doug in Texas. It has been a long time. Hello, good to see you. We're painting a hummingbird, a cutie little hummingbird. We just got those wings there. You can even put some little white streakies of feather in there if you want. How's that going? Oh, the sun is ruining everything for us, you guys. Oh, look, it looks like he's flying by. <laughs> I'm just kind of adding a little bit more water into my paint as I go, because now I want it to be even more translucent still want more paint than water, but you want a nice little consistency in there. And we are going to start doing our good old highlights again, but making sure I'm like a broken record. I'll bring it close as usual. But you want to see, oh my gosh, this now you can't even, can you guys see where I put the white on his head? <laughs> Right here. How do I solve this problem? No, I can't. It looks beautiful with the sun. Oh, okay. Well, there we go. That's good then. I don't know if you guys could see everything with the highlight, but whoop, there we go. Cause I'm a vampire, I don't like the sun. <laughs> you have a friend in Manitoba. That's a couple provinces over from me. 
That's one province I've only been to once for ringette. Okay, we are going to add a couple little streakies down from his eyeball above that dark blue line that we did. So right here. I need to get it in the, let's go right there. Oh, it's so cute. I'm so happy with him. You can do a couple little streakies under his eyeball. Again, if you're using a reference, look at where your hummingbird's white spots are. I'm gonna do his chest a little bit. Actually, Bueno, I never know where you are, but I always love seeing whenever you post from your like painting area, you always have such nice plants outside. Such a beautiful view. That's what I try to pretend with all my plants inside, but I actually live downtown in the concrete jungle, <laughs> which I wouldn't trade for the world I love living downtown. Okay, here we got some little white streaks of feather hair at the bottom here. And maybe some little tufts on his butt too. Let's do another line there. Again, not too much rhyme or reason. But look, I just did too much, like a white line there. Now his belly looks like it's concave. Concave, right? Is that when it's in, inside? So I'm gonna go and fix that in a second. You know what I didn't do? We didn't splatter anything. Here I said that we were gonna do splatter and I didn't. I'm just doing, like I said, I'm just doing that whiteout technique because I did white out a couple things and I just want it to look unison all the way around. So I'm just gonna give it that white line around the whole thing, even though I'm not fixing things around the whole thing. But like I said, just, I think it's important to remind you that if you do put pure white, maybe the color doesn't match your canvas. Maybe your white isn't exactly the same. So if you do just this mock-up white line around it, I'll bring it closer and see if you can see it. It won't look like you're trying to cover anything up. It'll just look like you painted an outline around your little guy. And that technique, like I was saying, of mixing the black in, like you can push that way farther, right? Like I've just, I've left a lot of color because that's just who I am as a person. But you can bump that up even more and hide a lot of the colorful colors that we have underneath and just have them peeking through. And that's like a really nice technique too. But see what I mean? Like if I bring it really close, can you guys see the paint outline around it? So it's very subtle, but if I only had it just in one spot, it would be very evident. So you can just paint around the whole thing. Oh yeah, I wanted to fix this belly that I messed up. Because I whited it out too much. And again, so some people might want to outline the whole thing. Some people might not want to outline the whole thing. It's again, a very up to you decision on that one.
But I feel like you guys are all just kind of having some fun slobbing some paint around. I'll keep letting you do that while I just touch up a couple things. And let me know, as you guys are finishing it up, are we seeing anything weird? Do we have any other questions? Do you guys need me to do the pressure outline? <laughs> I mean, the pressure lesson with the paintbrush about what happens when you use different pressure. I can do that. Some people think outline ruins it. Some people don't like outline. Some people like me live off of outline. <laughs> I need the outline. It's my comfort zone. Oops, I just made him chubby again by accident. What I was trying to avoid, I painted it on anyway. And see, with a canvas, you can just dip a little dip a rag or whatever you're using in water and you can literally like wipe away wipe away your whoopsies I can't believe I just led you guys astray that whole time and didn't have my computer plugged in sorry you guys <laughs> Oh, she's leaking. Okay, wait, I always get this messed up. How's that? See, it's way color, more colorful than the reference photo we're using, but it's a good point of reference to see how you can bump up just an average picture. Just like how someone was asking, do I like hyper-realistic photos or realism painting and of course it's a I'm not shitting on anybody's stuff at all but I think it's fun and just a creative outlet to try and make something of a picture that's your own flail some paint around schlob it on you guys cutie schlob <laughs> that's what my shirt's gonna say cutie schlob Thanks, Dresden. Always. You're so generous. I appreciate it. I appreciate you watching, tuning in. But yeah, if you look at my picture and you look at the hummingbird here, like you can see where I have pulled some of that natural color and made it more rainbow. Do I paint landscapes? You think all you've seen is people and animals. <laughs> so what is really funny, and it probably sounds weird, it doesn't really make sense, is I'm not good at landscapes. <laughs> landscapes are hard. I mostly, I mostly do animals and portraits, yes. Um, one, we did one paint night that was like a nighttime scene with like, trees and like a starry sky but I feel like I taught it bad because I'm just bad at it <laughs> like abstract and landscapes are tough for me um but I'm not against it I'm trying to think I did a piece like let's see if I can get it up on here let's see if I can find it while you guys touch up some stuff um we're basically done. We're basically done. I always just teach you guys how to do the animal and the background could be whatever. Let's see. Like I did do... What do you mean, Bueno? You can! You're an amazing painter. So that's not a landscape, but oops, oops, oops. Come on. It's not a landscape, but it's not a person or an animal. Oh my gosh, can you just stay? Stay just nicely right there, please. Um, 
What else we got? Just scrolling through my Instagram here. Joe Exotic, of course. But I did one landscape of like trees. One of my teachers bought, not bought. One of my teachers did a beautiful photo of like woods with the tree. Well, I guess that's kind of a landscape, but there's a per. Oh, you guys can't see it. This is kind of a landscape, but it's a person in the landscape. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> um, I'm trying to find the one. You feel like we could do a rad northern lights with a landscape? Uh, we actually, one paint night before, oh, here it is. One paint night before I started recording them, we actually did do that. Can you guys see it now? That's a landscape, right? In a sense. One of my teachers took this photo and he went for like a hike and he posted on his Instagram and I was like, can I paint that? And he gave me permission. Should we do it? Something like that. You love snow and miss it, but shh, you can't admit that to anybody. That's true. That is true. I like snow too, but I'm a snowboarder. I like snow in the mountains. I don't like snow in my day-to-day -day life. <laughs> but it's beautiful. It's crazy to me. Okay, this is beautiful. Look at that little guy. Oh my gosh, I love their little pink beards. Oh, Janessa, you're here. Oh, again, I just said your name again. But this was a Janessa that I was saying that has been taking her techniques and doing great. Look at that cute little buddy. Um, what was I saying? In the mountains last year, or was it this year? I can't remember exactly when it was, but we were in the gondola going up. Um, and there was a, oops, um, a family from Florida and they were just like looking out the window, like so shocked. And then one of them, like their kids said something like, it really sparkles or something. And we just like had to ask like, where are you from? And they're like, born and raised in Florida and this is the first time we've ever seen snow ever and I was like what that's so crazy to imagine to like never live with snow but I'm just a true Canadian I play a ice sport I play ringette I snowboard I skate I love the winter too okay guys should I like I don't know am I supposed to should I paint a background I don't know all your flamingos looked beautiful. Oh my god, I said flamingo again. I think it's because I just read flamingo crafts. I blame you, flamingo, your username. <laughs> um, uh, all of the hummingbirds is the word. Turned out so cute. I'm sorry, not you. Don't have to be sorry. <laughs> I love that, Matt. Right, okay, some of you are still working, some of you are still working. Okay, good. I don't even know what a good background for this is because, like, I don't want to paint it blue because then he'll disappear and I don't... But then I can't paint it green because then he'll also disappear. Should I just paint it yellow? I'm thinking maybe let's do this. Let's just try something crazy. Erica did yellow. Okay, well, cool. Let's follow Erica's suit. I like that. I'm gonna get a little bit, oh, there's, I have a little bit of white on my palette as well as the yellow. And just for all y'all who are new or it's your first time or, cause I'm finding out that people are finding me on YouTube and I think that's so cool. I always just assumed you were all just my caffeine pals or my Instagram friends, but uh, I love that people are finding me. Uh, I think Ellie actually is one of them. I'm glad that you guys are finding me on YouTube. I think that's so cool. Um, I will always go over how I do things so that you aren't led astray, but just let me get more water, just like Ellie said. My water is messy. So I just need a cleaner one. Okay, okay, okay. 
Yeah, first found me on YouTube. I think that's so cool. It's just because like Instagram has been my one and only, like that's what I have been building for years and years and years and what I spend all my time on is Instagram. So I just didn't even, didn't even think about, I just thought it was so small time. You love watching people paint. You've got your kids hooked on Bob Ross. Doug, put them on my YouTube channel. All of these I just put literally right to YouTube. And then people, just like Ellie, you can follow along at home and you can pause and rewind and fast forward. And so it doesn't have to be the quick kind of version that we do here. But, uh, okay, you guys, when we're doing a background, you are just going to start. It's I just find it easier to go either right up to or just close, just about up to your, oops, my dirty hands are getting all over here. Just about up to your little flamingo. I always say like playing keep away, like don't touch it, but come close. And then you kind of have a little bit more liberty of being a little bit messier and crazy on the outside. Um, and I know this whole time I've been like, be careful with your brush strokes, make sure that you do the right direction. But when it comes to backgrounds, I think it's fun. Did I say flamingo again? God damn it. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> She's a little hummingbird. Um, I think it's cool to have your backgrounds kind of crazy. You can add more water in there to kind of give it a little bit of a tie dye look. You can go right in with your white into your paint and kind of add a little bit of more of a, um, textured background. <laughs> I think it is. I didn't notice it before, but it's a hundred percent Flamingo's fault because her username is Flamingo Craft. So every time I look at the screen, I just see Flamingo. <laughs> uh, what can you do though? What can you do? Today we painted Flamingo and that's it. <laughs> The Flamingo is one of my favorite paint nights that we ever did, though, to be honest. I, uh, it was so easy and so fun. Hummingbird, hummingbird, hummingbird. I just have to, like, jam it in my head. <laughs> once you say it once, you're hooked. I know, it's bad. Just, like, cutie for you guys. Gotcha. I am going to be dreaming about flamingos. And see, like I said, I'm going, I put just pure yellow onto my pot, onto my canvas, but now I went pure white and I'm going in the yellow and it's kind of mixing on the palette, which is cool, or on the canvas, which is cool. I'll bring it closer so you guys can kind of see the textures you get from going between thick and thin paint, adding water, adding color. I need a little more white. Oh, God. Um, I saw a meme the other day that I keep thinking about that made me laugh and it was like do British people like break out into like American accents for fun sometimes like how I just broke into a British accent by accident do British people go into Canadian accents for a second I don't know Anybody? Is there any, any? I know that there's actually some people from the UK that watch these videos. It's too late for them to do it now, but maybe when they watch this, they'll be able to answer that question for us. Boop, boop, boop. See, look at it close up. It's like not, there's really, she messy. But it's cool, like there's lots of water right here so you get the drips. There's kind of thick paint right there so you get some texture. I'm all about that messy life. And again, playing keep away with your hummingbird. Oh yeah, see, when I, as a kid, 100%, we would do accents all the time. I love a British accent. 
But it's funny because we I don't think I have an accent, but I'm told all the time that I do. It doesn't sound like a Canadian one, though. <laughs> Whenever I travel places, people think I'm from, like, the South. South America. Not South America, but South of the States. And I don't know where that came from because I'm a Canadian through and through. <laughs> okay. How's that? Some people like to do their backgrounds first. That's totally cool too. I do my backgrounds last even in my own practice. Um, but the main reason why I teach you guys to do it is because it's tough to say with your quality of paint. Some people's quality of paint can't paint over top of some colors. So I don't want to lead you to failure, set you up for failure. Um, from the beginning, so. And sometimes, who knows, how do you know what your painting needs until it's done? Like, I didn't know that a yellow background would be nice until it, we got there, so. Okay. How's that? And because people have been messaging me, they love the glitter. I can show you guys how I do glitter, which is just the easiest thing of all time. Now that your background is wet, if you have some crafting glitter, some people were using their like makeup glitter, whatever. I would probably suggest to put it in your hand first, but I can't do that when I'm showing you guys because sometimes it comes out quite quick. But you just go over the wet spots of your painting. Gently. And then you'd let it dry flat, but just for this purpose, I'll put it up. It, how can you guys see the fun glitter in there? It's kind of hard. Alright, I'll bring her close. And usually when the paint dries, it locks in that glitter, but I won't lie to you. Some extra might still come off. Ask my boyfriend. There's glitter everywhere. <laughs> I lock mine in with varnish when I do my original paintings, but that's just something fun to play with if you'd like. It adds another piece of whatever, another element to your painting. Are we like done, you guys? I kind of like this background. It's cool. I usually wouldn't think of a yellow background, but into it. Looks really nice. Thanks, Doug. Should we see what everyone else is doing? All right, what do we got here? Check that out. Ooh, with a white back. I like that. Look at you doing two at one go. You crazy? I like how different they both are. Beautiful. Oh, nice. See the yellow? Ooh, you got the drips there. You guys. Oops, I didn't mean to click it. Oh my gosh, so cute. What are you using? Is that like a watercolor? What are you painting on? That looks great. It's holding the texture nice. Oh, look at that pink background. Oh my gosh. So stinking cute. Yeah, I like the yellow. Oh, right, Erica, you did yellow. You're, you're the first to do yellow. Love, love, love. I don't know if this per Oh, just kidding. That person's not here. <laughs> uh, flamingo still going. Pink for the... <laughs> yeah, pink for the flamingos. <laughs> and I think all of those... Nobody's in the requests today. Okay, okay, you guys. That was a short and sweet one, wasn't it? I'm really pumped on him. Remember, if you post it, tag my aunt in it. Her Instagram's down here, Jacqueline Sinclair. I'll tag her and everything too that is shared to your story. I love when you guys share it to your stories. I share it with everyone. Everyone loves to see them. You give people hope for them to do it too because a lot of people get scared and they don't think they can do it. 
but look at all y'all doing it, right? You have me for another minute or two. Any other questions? Other? Well, oh, look, you guys can see there's a Marilyn Manson right here. Just creepy in the background. I actually just started a huge project yesterday. Will this turn all the way? Let's see. Do you guys see those big canvases? Oh, do you see down there? Where is he? Right here? Can you tell who those two people are? And then there's gonna be two more on those two yellow ones, and there's two red ones over here. And in the end, there's gonna be 30 of them. <laughs> and that's why I might have to Cut down on paid nights a little bit, okay guys? Don't worry, I won't leave you forever, but I might just break it down to once a week. Uh, at the end of the month here. I'll let y'all know, don't you worry. But other than that, thanks for letting me show you my art school projects. 30, I know, it's the biggest, it's the biggest uh, commission I've ever gotten ever, and I can't tell you guys all the details of it, but, um, I will, yes, 100%, you'll see the end results. Um, there will be 15 by the end of July and 15 by the end of November. So things are turning for sure. Um, but yeah, you'll see the end results 100%. I'll just, it'll start getting a little bit more secret before the company gets them. But then you'll see them all, don't worry. And you gotta follow me on Instagram for that, of course. Um, Instagram or on my website, I will post, but I don't update my website as much as my Instagram. But thanks for the live. Hey, no problem. Can we do your package in the mail? It should literally be any day. I just realized I didn't send you your tracking number, so I'll get that. There's a couple tracking numbers I didn't send out now that I am remembering. So I'll send that out. Um, Dresden, thanks for the love, as always. Um, what else? No problem. Always love having you, bro. And I just called you bro, say bueno. But, um, but uh, did you paint the hummingbird today or did you paint something else? I'm always excited to see what you paint along with for paint night. Um, what else? Father's Day themed next, on Thursday, not next week, in a couple days. Uh, it'll be like, I'm thinking fishing. I'm thinking fishing related. We'll see, but beer is good too. We'll figure something out, but just no. Thursday, Father's Day, um, bring your fathers. Should we have it fathers themed? I don't know. Fishing or a giant beer can? Maybe we can do both. Maybe if it's not too long, we can do both. Nice to relax and watch you paint. Thanks, Doug. Like I said, if your kids wanna paint something fun, bring them to my YouTube channel, which is the same as my Instagram and caffeine and all the jazz. Um, we've had some people as young as three paint along with us and their results are always so cute. <laughs> um, a fish in a bottle. Look at that. Fish in a beer bottle. We can double them both up. I'm trying to think. I'll look into it. We've got some time. Um, and other than that, that's it. That's all folks. Like and subscribe the usual. I always forget I'm a YouTube person too. Thanks for watching everyone. Never feel scared to send me a DM or a comment or something about requests or questions or suggestions. I'm up for it all. Remember guys, I'm a painter for the people. I'm here for you. <laughs> and uh, I'll see you Thursday at 8 p.m. MDT. Okay, oh my gosh, what's my, I almost forgot what my, um, what should my thumbnail be? Should I kiss him? <laughs> Should I hug him instead? I never know. <laughs> I'll just go screenshotting through that for a while, but can I make a hummingbird? <laughs> okay. One of those will do. Okay, you guys, good night, good night. Did anyone send any in? Oh, wait, we, I don't want to, oh my gosh, you guys. I was going to say, we don't want to miss prime example. Ah, flamingo making a teacher proud. Um, See, super colorful, but then bumping it down with some natural colors, but then you can see, oh, you can't see my mouse, but you can see all those like
pops of color popping through so it brings a lot more life to just than just a natural colored oh i love little hat little flowers oh my gosh oh and this oh girl i'm showing you yours watercolor paper i always forget you can't cap comment but look at her sorting hat love oh my watch was listening to me say that the whole time love 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 good job you guys the hummingbirds turned out so cute as usual oops let's bring that back there but uh thanks again you guys i always love having you i love seeing all your familiar faces and i'll see you on thursday thursday okay bye oh, everyone also shout out again last shout out to my cutie little aunt for giving us the photo and uh, probably inspiring a lot more of our paint nights to come. So give her a follow, 100%. And we will see you next time. Bye, guys.